Now, a lot of y'all have probably heard of Randall Kaufman. He's a pretty popular tire out in the Pacific Northwest, uh, probably most famous for being the creator of the Stimulator, but he's got a couple of other great patterns to his credit. One of them we're gonna tie right now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So, Randall Kaufman, a pretty famous steelhead tire out in the Pacific Northwest. He's got a couple of really cool patterns. Uh, not hugely popular, but I have seen them in a, in a couple of books. The one I'm tying today, this is called the Coal Car. Now, I'm not sure when he came up with this pattern, but it was sometime after another pattern he created called the Freight Train, because it's very similar. It's kind of just a variant of it. Now, the most distinguishing feature on this steelhead pattern is the body. It's got three distinct sections of the body. The front half is a black chenille, and then the back half is wool, and it's a yellow orange for the back one-fourth, and then a brighter, kind of a red orange for the, the second one-fourth. And then the wing. The wing is pretty unique. It calls for black squirrel. Now, I got these two black squirrel tails from John Sternigle. Uh, we did a trade. I sent him a starling skin, and this is some really cool stuff. And he's, I got this several months ago, but I hadn't tied with it until today, which, you know, shame on me, because I really like this stuff. Now, it has similar characteristics of a regular squirrel, but it's, it's already black. I mean, there's an animal called the black squirrel. So I'm sure it would behave just like a regular squirrel tail dyed black, but with this one, you don't have to dye it. So it's pretty cool stuff. Now, if you don't have a black squirrel, and I know a lot of you probably don't, I imagine you could tie this pattern with a regular squirrel, or maybe just go with a bucktail. If I used a, a black bucktail, I would probably tie it a little bit sparser just to keep it from building up too much bulk. Now, as a steelhead fly, this one, of course, you can tie it in a pretty wide range of sizes. The recipe calls for as big as a 2-0 and as small as an 8. Now, I'm tying it in a 6, because I don't do a lot of steelhead fishing. I live in southern Maryland, just not a lot of steelhead water around here. So there's nothing that says you can't take a steelhead fly and tie it in one of the smaller sizes and fish it in your trout water. That's what I'm going to do with this thing. Fish it as a big wet fly or a small streamer. Now, it's a pretty cool looking pattern. Not very hard to tie. I think you're going to like it. Let's give this thing a shot. So there you go. In the vise, Randall Kaufman's coal car. Now, I'm tying this on a size 6. The recipe says as big as a 2 alt and as small as an 8. So a pretty big range on this guy. Uh, this is a size 6. It's a 2 extra long, 1 extra strong. And I'm stepping up my thread from my standard 70 denier to a 140 denier. And I'll lay a base all the way to the start of the bend. Okay, that looks fine. Now, the tail on this, just black, black hackle fibers. I'm using some cheap, strong saddle hackle and a pretty good sized chunk of it. About right there and probably a hook gap. So not a tiny tail, but you know, not huge. Maybe just a little bit less than a hook gap. So let's put a couple wraps on it right there and check. Yep, that's gonna look fine. And what I'll do here, I could snip that off if I want. I'm just gonna put some loose wraps on it and let it form part of my underbody here. We've got a wool yarn for our body. Just try not to get it too lumpy. So before we get to the body, let's tie in a rib. Oval silver tinsel, and I think this is a small. Does it look like a small? It does. The sticker came off my spool, so I'm not 100% sure, but I'm gonna guess it's a small. So let's catch this in all the way to the back where we're gonna start wrapping it. Now the body on this thing is one of the coolest parts of it. Um, it's going to be a yellow-orange back one-fourth and wool. So here's a, a wool yarn, and this would be too thick to tie on as is. This is a four strand, so I just split the four strands up, and then you get a piece that looks kind of like this right here. And that's going to be enough. It's a thin, thin body. So let's catch this in right here. I might have a little bit of scruff I want to trim off right there. And for the proportions on this, it's the, the front half of the body is going to be a black chenille, and then the back one-fourth is going to be this yellow-orange, and then the next 
is going to be a red orange or a brighter orange. So contrasting color right there. But this is one of the harder parts of the fly to get this right. You don't really have a whole lot of this back here showing. And you know, the first one I tied, I got the proportions wrong and I ended up having too short of a black chenille up front. So just be mindful of this. I'm gonna start it in the back and I'm gonna go up and down and back. So I end up with three layers of this yellowish wool right here. Okay, two wraps to get that off. And it's fuzzy, but that's cool. That's probably one of the reasons this fly could be effective. So we got a little bit of a, a mess right there, but hey, we're fine. So do the same thing with this, you know, orange red uh, wool yarn. I split it into one piece right here and I'm gonna catch this in. And this one is going to be pretty much about the same, you know, length on the hook as that yellow one is. So probably about right there, I think. Maybe not that far forward, but go ahead and wrap this one up. I'll do the same thing, probably three layers. And if this one is, ends up being a little bit thicker than your yellow, I think that's fine. I wouldn't want it to be thinner. You'd have an awkward looking fly. So we'll do a couple of layers here just to, you know, this one might end up being just a little bit thicker than the yellow. Okay. Now for all practical purposes, I think those are close enough to the same widths right there. And we're not gonna wrap the rib yet because we're gonna wrap the rib up through our black chenille as well. So this is a small black chenille. You could probably get away with a medium. And I had the small out and closer, so I'm gonna use this. And I can always put two layers if I want. So let's take it up here to where we're gonna stop it. Probably, I'd say right there. Don't get too greedy because we've got two more components up here at the head. So just wrap your chenille up here and if you need it to be thicker, go up and then take a few wraps back over itself to thicken it up. So I don't think that's thick enough. Let's go back here and make it thicker. Okay, I think that's fine. And the, the goal on this, per the recipe, the black should be of the same length as, you know, the orange and yellow combined. In this case, it is not. So that's a little bit of a failure, but you know what? It's a fish and fly, we can live with it. I think it's gonna be just fine. So let's go ahead and wrap this rib. I'm gonna take the first wrap directly at the back and then open evenly spaced wraps all the way up through the yellow and orange and through the black chenille. Okay, after you get this up front, tie it off. Don't worry if those wraps up front aren't perfect. A lot of that's gonna be covered with our next component, which is the black hen hackle. I'm just gonna to try to smooth this out right here, make it a little bit easier to wrap my hackle. Okay. Now, black hen, this is not a soft hackle. If you have soft hackle, I think it would probably, might work just a little bit better, but it might not make that big of a difference. And tie it in from the tip or the, the thick end, however you like. I'm gonna tie it in from the thick end because I want the first few wraps to be laying some longer fibers. So two right there, and then just get it situated, get it oriented. It's gonna be swept back hackle. So, okay, that's fine right there. Go ahead and catch this off. That should be enough to have this secured. And I'm gonna take my hackle pliers because I don't have a whole lot of this feather to work with. And how many wraps do we want? I'm gonna say three. And if, if you could get four with the size of your feather, uh, go for it. It would probably still look pretty good. So I'm trying not to let this spin on me too much. That's two. I think uh, three will do it. That's, yeah, that's enough hackle right there. 
and let's catch this off with a couple wraps. And I'm gonna go ahead and snip this excess before I take it out of my hackle pliers. Sometimes that makes it just a little bit easier. Now, before we put the squirrel, let's just get this pushed back. So how about one more wrap to really lock it? And then push all this back so we've got a swept back. Kind of like a, you know, a lot of steelhead flies have this swept back look right here. And I'm gonna to try to go back onto that chenille just a little bit because a squirrel wing is gonna take, take a little bit of space here. So I think that right there is gonna be fine. I got a couple of rogue fibers sticking forward right there. Might have to take care of those at the end, but that's enough hackle and it's, it's splayed around the hook in a pretty good orientation. So the next component of this is this black squirrel tail. And I got this from John Sternigal, if, if I mentioned that in the intro. Uh, if not, I, I meant to, but thank you, John. This is some really cool stuff. This is not a squirrel dyed black. This is a black squirrel. So it's kind of cool. I forget where he lives, but he's got plenty of them where he lives. And it's not a big, big uh, clump of it. I'd say, you know, maybe that right there, but Definitely gonna put it in my stacker. Squirrel hair is slick, it stacks pretty well, and gives you a good look. So see those tips right there? Pretty well aligned. Let's pull this out. Get rid of any fluff or short hairs if you need to. Now make sure your thread is hanging toward the back of your eye there, and measure your length. Just a little bit past the bend of the hook, maybe not as far as the, the tail. I think that's gonna look fine right there. So I'm gonna hold it pretty tight with my material hand. I'm pinching the hook tight and the hair tight and put a couple of wraps right here. Let's go three and take a look at it. Okay, that's what I want. That's about the angle I like. And if I can keep that, I'll be in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna hold it again, a couple more wraps going back. And it hasn't spun around on me, so sometimes the squirrel will do that to you. Now here's a little tip right here. When you're lifting this up and cutting it off, don't reach in there and cut the whole thing at one time because it might cause it to spin on you. So I'll just go in here and, and just kind of chip away at it. Make sure you get it all. But now it might make it a little bit easier to get a clean head. And I'm gonna be crowding this eye a little bit, I can tell already, but you know, so be it. As long as we can keep that eye open, not get any head cement in it and get our tippet through there, we'll have a fishable fly. So I'm just trying to ramp this up a little bit without getting too awkward looking of a head. And that's gonna be fine. We can hide a few of those imperfections with our UV resin or head cement. So let's go ahead and put a whip finish on it. And then take a look, see how much cleanup we might have to do. I'm gonna do a four turn right there. Put my scissors in here and just poke them through. And that head's a little messy. I got a couple fibers sticking off, so let's see if we can just take care of that before we put our head cement on it. Other than that, I don't think we have too much cleanup. I think it turned out okay. So yeah, there you go. The Coal Car by Randall Kaufman. Drop of head cement or resin on that, and this is going in my box. So I appreciate you watching, folks. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.